Hello, today we're going to be looking at this calculated miscalculation right here. Why is it a calculated miscalculation, you ask? Well, that's because I don't, I sort of wasn't meant to buy it, but I sort of did buy it. This student amongst you may notice that this is a Buchler Music Easel. It is a 2015 reissue of the 1973 Buchler Music Easel. Fingermagook. The electric music box. It can be classed as one of the great underdogs of the pioneering synthesizer era. In 1973, there was 30 or less of these made. It's a little bit on the small run side of things. Putting that into context with the Mini Moog Model D, which 12,000 were produced in a space of 10 years between 1970 and 1980. And thankfully, if it wasn't for Buchler reissuing these in various different guises for the last 10 years or so, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't have one sitting in front of me to Day. I saw it on reverb and sort of fired over an offer and much to my horror this offer somewhat got accepted and now I'm living with the consequences. After owning this for the past two weeks has the worry of owning something like this uh, died down? Well I can safely say no I don't know yet. I don't know whether I'm gonna keep it or not. It's just it's too nice. I'm gonna scratch it and I'm really scared about that. One of the large contributing factors to getting this is I wanted to learn what Buchler and Buchler synthesizers were all about. Everything you read and look about Buchler is all kind of clouded in the sense of mystery. There's a way of describing these things. It's like, oh yes, there's bottomless depths of expressions that I don't think I'll ever be able to get to the bottom of in my lifetime. But for a bit of context, Don Buchler, a music composer engineer, bought out the Buchler 100 series in the early 1960s, uh, similar time to when Bob Moog bought out his Moog modular malarkey. And contrary to the popular opinion of these being the first synthesizers, that's just simply not the case. Synthesizers have been slowly bubbling on the back burner for decades before. However, the 1960s brought about easy to use microelectronics like transistors, operational amplifiers, stuff like that, that these synthesizers really liked munching on. And that brought about the pioneers like Mr. Bode, Don Buchler, Moog, EMS and such. To mix the concept of the synthesizer somewhat with business to actually bring it into the public world and put it in people's hands. Albeit in some of these scenarios very expensive, they are now out in the public instead of the concepts sitting in laboratories, small garages and very small industries indeed. Definitely check out Mark Doty's videos having a chat about Buchler and Moog and stuff like that. The West Coast versus East Coast and now it's all a bunch of poppycock and the history of a synthesizer is much more complex. I mention this because it introduces this synthesizer not as a West Coast synth but just as a synthesizer in general because there's a lot of crossover between this and other synthesizers of the time. For instance, this came out in 1973. However, this rather funky EMS synthesizer came out in 1971. I'm not saying it's the same blooming thing, but maybe there was something like, that's a cool idea, that's very nice. But out of all of the combination synthesizers of this time, I think this one is quite complex and it is definitely different in the way it does things. All of them had a relatively similar technical checklist, but this one is a little bit different. I really want to have a look inside because I've got the schematics over here. You can get them on the internet and it just shows you what the 1973 schematics look like. For instance, this is the sequencer board. There was a bunch of boards sitting on the back, but as you can see, there's the five stage separate sequencer. There's the random voltage board, envelope generator board. Every single module within this top part actually has its own circuit board so it's sort of like a modular sitting inside of a synthesizer however that's the same as the VCS3 and things like that so that's understandable uh, looking here you can see that the step sequence of this one is it's on it looks like it's on 4000 series logic circuits for instance these ones in here are logic gates flip-flop gates inside of 4013 chips I wonder if it's the same chips inside here. And I wonder if it's the same specified operational amplifiers in here as well. Let's have a quick look. We're not gonna spend too long on this, but I'm really curious. So it's actually split up into two pieces. And that's another thing I haven't mentioned. Um, the top bit, which is the 208 module, you can now get as its own standalone module. And you can also build it as a DIY synthesizer. I did look into that option, but it actually ends up becoming quite expensive in itself to make the DIY version because all of the hardware is actually quite pricey and 
there is a surprisingly large amount of components in here. And we're gonna find out exactly how these are laid out in a second. I'm really hoping it's not just gonna be squidged into a blob on the side. Oh, how bad would it be if it's just like a Raspberry Pi just sitting there? Oh my God, it's not gonna be that. Don't worry, it won't be that. Um, well, I hope not. Well, I bloody hope not. I haven't actually seen any pictures of the back of one of these specific ones, so let's have a look, see, shall we? Are we ready? Oh, oh, wow, wow. Oh, there's some serious stuff going on in here. Ooh, holy moly, I don't, that's, that's tightly packed. And that looks quite incredible. Wow, no way, no way. Yeah, okay, the through hole circuits have been swapped with surface mount. However, if you look down here, you'll see these are Vactrols. We'll talk about Vactrols in a little bit. And you know, this wouldn't be a Buchla music easel without these things. We've got the springy dingy reverb right here. They match up with the schematic. Look, it says board one sequencer and board one sequencer. It's the blooming same thing. Board, uh, board number two, random vault source keyboard interface. Random! This is way more legit than I thought. I thought it was literally just gonna be one circuit board. This is awesome. Right, let's try and pull this off. Let's try and get it off. Oh, these are chunky connectors. It's the kind of thing that's saying, Sam, stop while you're ahead. Hey, here we go, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Is it the same blooming circuit? Ooh, four, four. Yeah, 4013. Four, oh, what about the amplifiers? They might have been substituted. I see one LM3900. I see one, I see one, here we go. So the ICs are labelled slightly differently, but 4009, no! No, that end one is an LM3900. Even the op amps are the same. Ooh wee! I mean, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. It would be understandable if something is completely untraceable and unfindable, then it would have been swapped. But it's pretty cool that looking here seems to match up somewhat, except for the IC designations, with the actual circuit board right here. That's blooming awesome. Anyway, before I break it, because I probably avoided the warranty already, let's get it, let's get it back in there. Oh no, oh no, the bit of, bit of this has come off. Gotta stick that on, gotta stick it on. Obviously some of the bits are a bit modernised, like the ribbon connectors, but that's blooming cool. Woo! The way this has been put together, which is pretty faithful with the way it was initially put together, albeit surface mount, it kind of really speaks to the kind of price of this thing. They haven't skimped, completely redesigned it and put a whole back PCB on it. They've actually gone with the initial schematic design, as much as I can tell. Which, if I'm honest, I think is pretty damn cool. Right, now let's turn it on. Phew, it's on, it's on, it's working. Oh dear, why is it not working? Oh, I thought I broke the sequencer for a second then. The bonuses we have on oscilloscope right over here. This came out in the time of the Buchla System 200, hence the numbers 218 and 208. But anyway, because it's two separate modules, we need to wire them together. So these are kind of handily kind of connected and we're just gonna leave these in there for this video. There we go. Now if I flick the keyboard, you notice there's a little bit of a little bit of a light show going off over here. You notice there's color coded parts. These are basically modules within the synthesizer. We're gonna start over here. This is the sequencer, and it's a five-step sequencer. I know it's pretty funky. We've got an envelope generator, we've got a pulser, which can be self-triggered to sort of send it into kind of an LFO mode that triggers loads of things. And for simplicity, we're gonna flick this switch down to pulser, and this is gonna mean that the envelope generator right here is also gonna be triggered by the pulser. We, we can make it go really fast, make it go really slow, yeah. We can also get the envelope generator to be triggered by the sequencer over here, so flip the sequencer, turn on some gates, and now we can make it go in half, so We've also got a random voltage we can trigger by the pulser as well, so it acts as a sample and hold. You can see that LED is randomly going all over the place. After that, we get over to this module right here, which is the first musical sounding oscillator. It's called the modulation oscillator because it's somewhat a multi-purpose, but it's also sounding, so we'll turn it up and we'll go. Oh, you can see it. You can see it. There's a square wave, you can see there's a bit of a twang, but that's fine by me. Sine wave and ramp. Of course there is a spring reverb over here, so we're already gonna flick that over just to make it sound a little bit more fancy. Then we go over to this oscillator, which is the complex oscillator. The modulation oscillator is actually modulating the complex oscillator over here, and it's got another few quirks and features. We're gonna turn it up. There we go. 
Ooh, it's already getting a bit funky. Turn off the reverb for a second. So we're on, we're on a sine wave. Ooh. Ooh, get the voltage down. Flick it over to his ramp. But this is the modulation oscillator, so if we turn up the modulation, this is going to start modulating this one. There we go. That's amplitude modulation, frequency modulation. Then we go over to this last section, which isn't like the low pass filters in mini modes of the time and ARP 2600s. This is the low pass gate. You remember around the back there was these big chunks. These are called Vactrals. Basically what those are are LEDs and light dependent resistors kind of plonked together. Unlike the solid state way that the voltages in the filters were controlled in other synthesizers of the time, this was controlled by those Vactrals that gives this a very funky sound. And as we play it on, you'll notice that funky sound effervescing from it. You can have it just as a voltage controlled amplifier. You can have it just as a low pass filter. You'll notice as you turn up the low pass filter, it gets soft into hard like that. And then you can have a combination of both of them, which sounds, which to be honest, sounds pretty much the same as the low pass. the reverb as usual. Oh, the reverb's so nice in this. Get the arpeggiator, see what the arpeggiator does like this. Very nice. Right now, you're basically only hearing the interaction between this oscillator and this oscillator. That's when these funky things at the bottom come in handy. So if you notice, they're actually color coded again. So the sequencer, there's an arrow going down to this banana jack, it's blue. And there's also a blue one here. Well, these are the voltage outs for the sequencer. Uh, the white one's got an arrow coming from the random voltage, there's a white switch on there. And the random voltage is coming out from these. Uh, you've got an arrow coming from the orange switches, which is the envelope generator. And that's handily going over to this banana jack, which is also orange, and that is the output of the envelope generator. And then the same with the pulsar, there's an arrow going onto the yellow ones. And then the purple is the pressure output of the keyboard down here, the more you put your finger down. That's when we get either a banana jack or one of these little jumper crossbar finger magoops. On top of that, you'll notice that there are these black banana jacks. These are actually voltage inputs. And these are arrowed going up to these faders right here. Well, how it works is the voltage comes out of one of these and into one of those, and then this is how much that voltage is gonna affect the knob that's next to it. So this one goes via that into that. This one goes via that into that. This one goes via that into that. This one goes via that into that, blah de blah blah de blah 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 de blah blah. So first we're gonna use the envelope generator right here, which is flashing right here, and arrowing over into the orange ones. We're gonna use this shorting bar and plug it between this input and this output from the orange, which is over here. There we go. And then we're gonna turn this up. Oh yeah, here we go. We're starting to get some music. Are you ready to dance in Berlin? 
Let's get another shorting bar, having it coming out of the sequencer, which is blue, and going into the voltage input of this oscillator. So we'll go for that. Oh, turn this up. Oh, turn them all to zero. And then turn them up one at a time. The other thing is the envelope generator is somewhat backwards to modern convention, so you've got to pull it down to slow it down and make it longer. Which makes sense in a frequency standpoint, because the higher and the quicker you want the rest of them to go, you go up. So it does make sense. And then we're going to have this shorting bar coming from the pressure uh, going into the wave folder. Actually, let's do this, but with the volume of the second oscillator. Ooh, this is gonna be nice. Oh, I'm being very arty. Now we're going to add a randomness to the actual speed of the pulsar. Just going to screw with it a little bit. And because the pulsar is actually triggering the sequencer, which is triggering the random voltage, and then that's going back into the pulsar, it's getting quite unpredictable what, what is actually going to happen. Oh, that, that spring reverb in this just makes everything.
something that we haven't touched on yet about this, which is actually a massive part of the synthesizer, is this thing right here, the external program interface. This was intended for these things. This is a preset board. And what this pretty much is, is this, but in a circuit board soldering kind of format. If you look here, it says sequencer, random, pulsar, envelope, um, modulation, oscillator, complex oscillator. Well, instead of using the knobs right here, you put in resistors in this, and then you prop it into here, and you can either mix the parameters together with this switch, which is in the middle, or you can make it completely controlled by this preset. And then in the original case, you could store a bunch of presets for songs in the little pocket that was sat right here. And people have already used this to add more functions and more utilities to the synthesizer. For instance, there's a digital preset module that you can plonk in here, and there's an off-the-shelf Buchla utility module you can plonk in here that adds a few more functions. But people have actually really gone to town designing some funky things, including, you know, kind of adding a couple of sequences here and there, and making the amazing 416, which is pretty much a whole breakout in itself on the top, and then other ones which go to absolute crazy town. And in the next video on this, there's gonna be a couple in the next few months, because I've really gotta justify this. We're gonna be exploring this because I haven't really done much of that yet. I've got a couple of preset boards here. I quickly put some things in. For instance, this one, I just put some light dependent resistors in it, much like in the Vactrols. So we're gonna plonk that in there. Oh no, we've got to turn it on. It's not recommended to plug, oh, whatever. Yeah, let's pop it in. It's quite bright in here, so I've got to cover it all up. The light is shining from the back, so I've got to cover it all up. It also opens up a lot of things that aren't available on the panel. For instance, the voltage control over the envelope generator. To show you what I mean, I put a light dependent resistor on the decay of the envelope. Let's just plonk it in. This is not recommended, but whatever. And uh, we get the envelope. You can see the flash on the envelope. We'll just cover it up. Oh no, we've got to turn it down to zero. And then, whoop, oh, oh. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit. It's very bright in here. There we go. It's pretty rough and ready, but I just bashed this together before I shot the video, by the way. I feel like I'm giving resuscitation to the synthesizer right now. This one, I put a few preset potentiometers into the sequencer part. We're just gonna put it in there. There we go. Obviously, I haven't gone to town with this idea because I really want to make a video about making my own kind of expansion idea, but that'll be in another video on this machine. I know this video wasn't an extensive look at this synthesizer. I was just trying to answer a couple of questions I had before I got it. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with it and my New Year's resolution was to make a few more kind of selections of songs. Much like the Porta Cosmo EP a couple of months ago, gonna try and make one with just this and whatever I make with the electronics for the expansion port that's over here. And I'll explore that on the next video on this machine because by gosh, it's gotta justify itself somehow. And I guess time is gonna tell whether I'm gonna keep hold of this or get rid of it and get Get something else of equal silliness. <laughs> if there was any sounds that you liked in the demonstration of this, well, there's the drive file over on Patreon that you could chop up and you could use it as samples if you want, because that'll be a bedrock for a sample pack later on, but you could download it on Patreon as well. And there's also a nice 20 minute song of this going off on itself that is nice having in the background, amongst loads of other songs and extra videos over on Patreon, which needless to say helps support you these videos and sort of justifies getting silly things like this, even if it is just for a little while. Anyway, that's it. I'm the Bumno Computer. This is the Calculated Miscalculation, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>